Cosser's law in electrostats. It states that it states that states that the total electric flux, the total total electric flux flux passing through a closed surface passing passing through a through a closed surface 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 is 1 by epsilon naught 1 by epsilon naught times the charge the charge the charge enclosed enclosed by the surface that is to say mathematically what is the flux e the electric flux e is equal to the surface integral of e dot ds ds which is equal to charge enclosed by epsilon naught in books they write q i'll write q enclosed so that you remember it exactly this is in books they write q by epsilon naught i'll keep this standard format i'll keep this format because you will not uh, uh, forget it what charge you have to take suppose this is a charge for you so plus charges are this many there are some plus charges and minus charges out so the total charge here is say everyone is of unit charge so there is only one charge which is to be taken into the flux here for this figure it would be because the total number of charges are only one two three four one two three four and five out of which two are positive two are negative and this one is positive this and this and this and this cancel out what you are left with one positive charge so just one positive charge q upon epsilon naught this is what it means now what is uh what is what do you mean by electric flux electric flux means now the very concept of electric flux electric flux the total number of this is the total total number of number of electric field lines electric field lines lines passing normally to the surface passing normally this is very important normally normally to the surface that means to the surface let us see suppose there is a surface like this there is a surface like this and the electric field lines are passing in this manner i have to see uh, these are the electric field lines passing so the thing is this i have to take the normal component let us make only one uh, one electric field lines this is and this is going in this direction normal to the surface is somewhere in this direction so this is your electric field this is e cos this is angle theta with the normal that is suppose any surface you have got right the tangent touches the curve at one point the perpendicular to this tangent is called the normal this is the tangent this is the tangent to the surface and this is the normal to the surface and the normal is always perpendicular to the tangent remember this thing wait a minute the normal the normal is always perpendicular to the tangent suppose this is the surface the tangent to the surface is somewhat like this somewhat like this and this and this are normal this and this and this is the normal to the surface this is the normal so that is e cos theta is the uh, component that is passing through this surface that what exactly it means the electric field lines now now let me uh, talk about in this case uh, how to derive the gauss's law how to derive the gauss's law now you see see the flux through any surface let us take a enclosed surface like this which is having a charge plus q here let us take a little small little surface here this surface so let us take this much part of this surface this is the direction of e and this is the direction of ds also the surface this is the surface the direction of ds is also this way so e and ds are directed in the same direction so phi e wait a minute phi e i'm trying to derive the gauss law uh, now you see uh, e dot ds it is e dot ds 
and E and DS are in the same same state. So E DS cos zero. So that is nothing but E DS and E you know and the flux. Basically, it is uh, the total integral of all this. So now I'm taking the integral of all this. So the flux E is uh, the uh, electric field due to a point of uh, charge Q is one by four by epsilon naught Q upon R square DS. Now this electric field is constant everywhere at uh, all places it is constant throughout it is constant at a particular distance at a particular distance it is same everywhere so it is uniform just take it out just take it out 4 pi r square uh, for epsilon naught r square now the integral on this ds on the total surface what is the surface of this circular thing what is the surface of a uh, surface area of a sphere surface area of a sphere is q 4 pi epsilon naught r square and the surface area of the sphere is 4 pi r square, you need to remember all surface area of a sphere, surface area of a cylinder, volume of a cylinder, volume of a cone, uh, this uh, volume of a sphere and all this. So 4 pi, 4 pi cancels out, 4 pi r square cancels out, what you are left with q upon epsilon naught, this is what you want to get. This is what is ex exactly what you need. Uh, to, uh, this is the proof of Gauss's law. By Gauss's theorem, Gauss's theorem, phi of e is e dot ds is equal to charge enclosed upon epsilon naught. Now from here, taking this and this into consideration, phi, uh, phi uh, uh, this integral over the whole surface is equal to charge enclosed upon epsilon naught. Now this charge enclosed, now in the next step I'll write it, charge this by Gauss divergence theorem by, wait a minute, by Gauss divergence theorem, Gauss divergence, divergence theorem, a surface integral is converted to a volume integral. This surface integral becomes this volume integral del dot E dV. This becomes del dot E dV, where dV is the volume, and this is del, this is the del dot E. In maths, you call it the Nabla operator. In, in physics, you call it the del operator. This is the only difference. And if uh, enclosed charges, rho, uh, rho, rho dv, this is again a you know, volume integral over a silent knot because charge enclosed in a volume is charge enclosed. See, charge enclosed in a volume is uh, charge per unit volume into volume. Charge, this is charge density actually, volume density, volume charge density. This is volume charge density basically. Density, this is that thing. Now bringing this, uh, this equation on this side, on this side, what you have is, what you have is, take the triple, this is the volume integral del divergence of E minus rho upon epsilon naught dV, the volume. The change in volume dv is the change in volume is equal to zero. Since this is only zero if this inside quantity is zero, this is this is only zero if the inside quantity is zero. That is, del dot e divergence of e minus rho epsilon naught is zero. From here you get divergence of e is equal to rho epsilon naught, and this was the proof that was asked in 2018.